at 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. And our top story tonight, a San Antonio couple is among the thousands of families trying to flee Ukraine tonight as the Russian invasion there continues. The couple had plans to escape to Poland, but with traffic backed up for miles at the border and men no longer able to leave Ukraine, the family has a tough decision to make as the wife is expecting their first child. It is unbelievable. Alicia Bonetta sharing their journey that's unfolding on social media, capturing the hearts of many right here at home. Alyssa Petrenko moved from San Antonio to Ukraine about a year ago and has been sharing her journey on Instagram. I am married to Ukrainian and I live here in Ukraine and I am 38 weeks pregnant. In this video posted on Instagram, Alyssa shared to her 22,000 followers nearly 20 hours ago that her friends had an extra seat in their vehicle to flee to Poland to escape the Russian invasion, forced to leave behind her husband, Andrey. Back here at home, her mother, Haiti Baird, also taking to Instagram in a series of videos to plea for prayers for the family. We are beside ourselves. We've been up all night praying and crying. In a rush for safety, lines and traffic jams have made it impossible for hundreds of Ukrainian refugees, including Alyssa and her husband, to cross into Poland. They are very Western Ukraine right now, and they are safe uh, for the moment. And Andre is still trying to get to her. And so um, he's stuck in traffic. It's crazy. And now another tough decision as Ukrainian men ages 18 to 60 are banned from leaving the country and asked to join the army. For Alyssa, who's about to deliver, they want to get her out of the country. They don't want to be separated. Today, thousands of friends, family and strangers pray and donate funds for the future of the young couple. It's crazy here. Please pray for this country. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. And out of the latest on the conflict in Ukraine, latest intelligence says U.S. officials are worried that Ukraine's capital could fall within days. Meanwhile, the U.S. is ready to impose more sanctions directly on President Vladimir Putin. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says the most intense fighting took place on a bridge leading from Crimea into the Ukraine, causing thousands of residents across the country to flee for their lives. We don't know what's going to happen here next. I think the best thing right now is to be safe, is, is not be here. Just. At last check, Ukrainian officials are reporting at least 137 people have died. And here at home, we are seeing some ripple effects at the gas pumps right now. Prices jumped at some stations around town up anywhere from 5 to 20 cents a gallon overnight. The average here right now is 314 a gallon. That's the highest we've seen in seven and a half years. Russia is the second largest crude producer in the world, so potential disruptions to that supply upset the global oil market. Oil did slip a bit today, but one analyst tells us that we can still expect a bumpy ride. Even without Russia, gas prices were nearly assured to go up. But now with the Russia situation, it adds a little bit of uncertainty. Now, gas prices rise every spring because of the switch to summer fuels and because demand surges when the weather warms up. While DeHaan does think the national average could hit $4 a gallon, he does not expect that for us here in Texas. Tonight, the San Antonio Fire Department investigating the cause of a brush fire. It happened on South WW White Road just off of Loop 410 around 3 this afternoon. Fire officials say while investigating, they noticed electrical wire burned to try to get the copper wire inside. We're told a couple of acres were burned in this fire. No injuries reported. No structures were burned. So far, no arrests have been made. Bear County has seen at least three noteworthy human smuggling cases just in a month. An assistant special agent in charge at Homeland Security Investigation San Antonio office says that San Antonio is typically a transient point, a hub of sorts for smugglers who might leave migrants here or split them off to travel up to Dallas, to Houston or farther into the country. The groups that do the smuggling run the gamut. You have some mom and pops all the way up to very sophisticated organizations. And then you have some that are strictly um, moving people. And then you have others that are, are opportunist and they're moving whatever they can through whatever means possible. Although the use of tractor trailers is huge right now for smuggling, Ryan says they also see small cars used. And when it comes to human smuggling, he says everything's on the table. And we have learned the name of a man who was found dead in a car at the Pearl earlier this week. Medical examiners say he was 22-year-old Manuel Rice. 
Police are actually were responding for a call to for a gunshot wound through Tuesday evening about 830 on Pearl Parkway and Broadway. Three men also there were said who said they were going to drive Rice to a hospital. They told police the shooting happened on the east side, but a crime scene was not located. That investigation is ongoing. A man is in police custody on suspicion of DWI following a crash downtown early this morning. This happening just before four on Brooklyn Avenue and Augusta Street. That's near St. Mary Street and I-35. Now the driver of that car crashed into a utility pole, causing his car to roll over. Police say they took him into custody after failing a sobriety test. His name has not yet been released. Let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers for Bear County today. Today, Metro Health is reporting over 200 new cases. Five more people have also died. Meanwhile, 365 COVID patients are in county hospitals. 884 are in the ICU and 41 people are on ventilators. And new at six, the southwest side will soon be home to an indoor arena that's already attracting major shows and entertainment. RJ Marquez got a sneak peek at the new tech Port Center and Arena at Port San Antonio and shows us why this facility being called one of the most technologically advanced centers in the country. We feel like we have something special here. In just a few months, this 180,000 square foot facility will transform into a world-class tech hub and arena, the first of its kind on the southwest side. When this $70 million project is completed in early April, the site will be home to the arena, but that's just the start. This area here, you have your six restaurants, all local. We have the First Land Gaming Center for the kids and adults built from the ground up. We have the Capital Factory, we have the Samset Museum. The Gaming Center will feature 60 individual stations, monitors, and broadcast capabilities that compete with other major cities, giving new opportunities for students in the area. That has the highest speed internet, the best computers, and they can compete with anybody on the north side of San Antonio, in LA, Vegas, or New York. So we just got to look at all the amazing features on this campus that include this state-of-the-art gaming center and also a capital factory, restaurants, anything that you could imagine. But the crown jewel of this entire place is this brand new 3100 seat venue that will host concerts, entertainment, and e-sports. This arena features retractable seating, a VIP area, suites, and other amenities. The arena has seven to one surround sound. We have a 60 foot wide video wall. We can build it to suite, we have sound, we have lights, we have the world's largest Tesla display. The arena already has multiple concerts lined up this spring and will also be used for robotics competitions, major esports tournaments, and possibly live sporting events. A digital and lifestyle playground spurring innovation from the ground up. What we're here to do is spur innovation. We want people to come here every day. We want the south side to embrace it. It's their building too. We want the west side to embrace it. It's their building too. All of San Antonio can come. RG Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Can't wait to see what it finally looks like. All right, let's take a look right now at traffic out there. Highway 281, Loop 410 West. Really looks like things are smooth sailing at this hour, both on the upper ramps there and on the lower main lanes. Yeah, meanwhile, we've seen the temperatures again start to drop off as we head towards the evening hours. Just how low will we go tonight, Adam Kasky? You know, we're not going to go that low. We're just going to no freezing. Not not locally. Huh? We're yeah, going to coast right where we are and maybe drop off a few more degrees. It's just been chilly and cold outside and it's going to stay that way. 32 earlier this morning, then we only warmed up to 40 degrees. Well below the averages of 47 and 69. Look at high temperatures elsewhere, mainly 30s in the hill country, near 40 elsewhere. Hondo 42 for a high. New Braunfels topped out at 41 degrees. Right now we're 36 Rock Springs, 39 in San Antonio, 44 Catula, and right, hovering right around that 40 degree mark. Again, a slight temperature drop through the evening and night, but becoming damp. We're going to add a little bit of rain to this cold weather before the sun returns and temperatures warm up. We're going to talk more about that and let you know how warm it's going to get and when in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. We are in the final days of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, and this year is likely to be one of the most diverse in history. And there is one local woman who's part of the reason why. Ursula Perry explains how a unique friendship helped the first black woman on the women's pro circuit to break through the rodeo barrier. I love this. I, oh, girl. Betty Jo Williams has been riding since 12 years old, thrown into the saddle by her uncle. Just hold on, she'll do the work. And 
That's all I did was sit there and hold on, and every time a calf got by, hey, she was after it. Even at age 68, it doesn't take much to get her boots back in the stirrups. She can still do a barrel pattern, albeit a little slower than the good old days when she was breaking into the rodeo circuit. Yeah, I, w I was the only black girl there. This was back in the early 80s when her friend and rodeo partner Sherry Mel was winning world championships. These two San Antonio women have been through thick and thin together. I got her in the Women's Pro Rodeo Association and... Uh, she started going to the all-girl rodeos with me. She competed right there beside me. She wasn't just there as a sidekick. She was competing. And she helped Betty Jo, sort of her wingman, when being the only black woman on the circuit caused a stir. She kind of got a little timid and say, you know I'm the only, onlyest black one here? And I said, well, that's okay. You're here to do the same thing everybody else is doing, you know? They knew I was with Sherry Mill. They know she's gonna say something. <laughs> so she kind of, you know, so Sherry was kind of your protector on the circuit. Yes. She never gave up on me. She was always, I got a horse, anything, everything, just come. It'll do it for you. Betty Jo recently had surgery on her knee. She hasn't been riding very much, but as you can see, she's a natural. She'll be back at it anytime now. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. Coming up, several San Antonio chefs are up for a prestigious cooking award. We'll hear from one San Antonio chef nominated for that award right after the break. That looks really good. You're hungry. I'm Stefania Jimenez, and here's what we're working on for you tonight on the Night Beat. San Antonio police arresting a second person in a disturbing case of child abuse that turned deadly. The boy's father and now the child's stepmother are accused in that case. The child that we're talking about was only four years old when he died. We're gathering more information from police, and we're going to bring that to you on the Night Beat Plus. A new CDC study shows a troubling trend, and that is that more young people are needing treatment for mental health conditions. But a local psychologist wants parents to know. Also, an old building gets new life. That's the hope after all, after a couple left that property to a San Antonio veterans organization. And we'll discuss how it's going to help our military heroes. We'll see you for these stories and a lot more tonight on The Night Beat. Thank you, Stephanie. Well, the San Antonio food scene celebrating this week after seven restaurants or their chefs nominated for the prestigious James Beard Award. Basically, it's like an Oscar award for chefs. Erica Hernandez spoke to one of the nominees about this honor and about what all this means for San Antonio. It is Pandulce, so it's, it's a dream come true for David Cáceres. He is nominated for Best Baker for his pastries at La Panaderia, the bakery cafe he owns with his brother. This is not just a, a personal achievement. I think it's, a, it's an achievement for La Panaderia. It's an achievement for my family, for my brother that has been with me all the time. We, have, we build this together we, with all the 114 people that works here. This is also a big deal for this location because this is the first time Pan Dulce has been nominated in the bakery category. This is the first time that Pan Dulce gets this national recognition and it's like it's something and it's in the map. La Panaderia isn't the only place celebrating. Other nominees include Mitch Lee, who is nominated for Outstanding Restaurant and Outstanding Pastry Chef. High Street Wine Company Wine Bar is named in the Outstanding Wine Program category. And under Best Chef category, Chef Steve McHugh from Cured, Isau Ramos Jr. from 2M Smokehouse, and John Russ from Clementine are nominated. Everybody's excited. This is also a huge win for the city's World Heritage Office, which already knew San Antonio has a great culinary scene after being designated a creative city of gastronomy. We are very fortunate to have such a collaborative community here and just a, a great culinary uh, scene. And uh, now the rest of the world is learning about it. Finalists for the award will be named on March 16th and the winners announced in June. In the meantime, David and La Panaderia are taking in this amazing accomplishment. We're trying to tell everybody that we, that we can do things in a different way, that we are as good as anyone. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Mm, we got some good places to eat around yeah, here. Yeah, right at dinner time. Yeah. All right, 38 degrees out there as we look at the tower. Beautiful shot of the city. Mm -hmm. Another one of those gray days, though, yes. Adam. Looks chilly. Yeah, and not much to show for all the clouds. You know, that's the thing. It's one thing when you have these gray days and, hey, they give you some good rainfall, but... 
that just hasn't been the case. I do anticipate some rainfall accumulations tonight into tomorrow, so cold and damp tomorrow, an indoor day. Sunshine returns by Sunday, and that's when temperatures start to rebound again. Finally, let's talk about temperatures so far this month. We're nearly five degrees below average. The warmest reading was 85 just really a few days ago on February 21st. The coldest reading was back on February 4th at 21 degrees. So we've seen quite the temperature spread this February, but when you average it out, we're running about five degrees below average, and I think we'll round out the end of the month with temperatures continuing to remain below average. Cloudy outside right now, 39 degrees, dew point at 22, a north wind at 12. You feel that breeze periodically, so that doesn't exactly help the situation. Bulverde 36, Castroville 43, Rio Medina 38, Comfort 36, Stinson 42. Right near 40 degrees right now, and I think that's about as warm as we're going to get as we get into tomorrow. And by and large, right near 40s, even as you get along the Rio Grande, not a big temperature change. Whereas yesterday, we had sunshine along the Rio Grande boosting temperatures. Not so much the case today. This is what we're expecting tomorrow morning up in the hill country. A brief light freeze around and a little before sunrise tomorrow. The elsewhere, I think mid 30s for low temperatures, but then we only make it to 40 degrees for the afternoon high. So just like today, not much of a change from the morning on into the afternoon. Temperatures basically holding steady tonight, then just going up a few degrees for tomorrow afternoon. 37 the high in Kerrville, 42 Pleasanton, 46 Catula, but 40 Stone Oak, 39 in Seguin, 37 the high temperature tomorrow in Bernie. And then by Sunday, we're back to 60 degrees with sunshine. Monday and Tuesday, right near 70. And next week is going to be a lot warmer than what we've been having lately. But let's talk about the little bit of moisture that's headed our way. We've got the overrunning situation, the cold, shallow air mass right here at the ground. But up above us, temperatures are actually warm just a few thousand feet above us. And we've got that warm, moist air coming in from the southwest, coming from the Gulf of Mexico, a little bit of moisture and some energy coming in from this trough, this dip in the upper level flow over the western United States. I do think that will enhance our precipitation a little bit overnight tonight and off and on through the day tomorrow. Already on the radar screen, some light showers and sprinkles far east of San Antonio. That's where we're seeing most of the activity. It's moving pretty quickly, but it's just quick little I don't even want to say splash and dash. It's more of a sprinkle and dash, and that's about it. Moving south to north, Victoria, Tequero, Hallettsville, Moulton, Shiner, Gonzales, Luling, Seguin, and then even locally, we've had a few of these little sprinkles moving south to north, and I think they'll become more prevalent. So turning damp pretty quickly this evening and dampness sticking around tomorrow and even becoming more widespread. Now that said, early in the morning around and before sunrise, maybe a light glaze on exposed and elevated surfaces. We're talking fences street signs and parts of the hill country. Otherwise, just off and on periods of sprinkles and light rain, especially along and east of I-35. Highest accumulations would be closer to the Gulf Coastline. Those of you Lavaca County, DeWitt County, Carnes County, Goliad, you could see a quarter to a half inch of rain, whereas locally I'm thinking a little closer to a tenth of an inch. So at least something to accumulate in the rain gauge for a change, even though it's not that impressive and not going to be drought denting. 34 in the morning, 40 the high, north wind at 10 to 15, off and on sprinkles, light showers, cold and damp tomorrow. Then by Sunday, I think the noon hour is when we'll see full sunshine again, and that'll boost us up to 60 degrees. And then early next week, sunny and back near 70. Mm -hmm. Can't wait for that. Thanks, Adam. All right, the Spurs are calling it their playoff push. Well, it's underway, Larry. It is underway. They tipped off, oh, I don't know, 12 minutes ago or so. They are on the road today against the Washington Wizards, and hopefully we'll get to see Zach Collins and play out there as he gets better, and he's working with Jakob uh, Pertle. That's the Spurs' new big man duo. And the NFL Scouting Combine is next week, and that'll feature a couple of Jets and Rockets coming up. After a nice break, the Spurs are on the road tonight to take on the Washington Wizards, which will mark both teams' first game since the NBA All-Star break, and it's a final leg for the rodeo road trip. The Spurs come into the game as the 11th seed in the Western Conference and one and a half games behind Portland for the 10th seed, which would get them into the play-in tournament, just like last season when the Spurs finished 10th in the West. Back on February 4th, offseason pickup Zach Collins made his Spurs debut, scoring double digits. The power forward has missed a bulk of the season while recovering from ankle surgery. So far, he's averaging five 
5.8 points and 5.2 rebounds in five games played. Team him up with center Jakob Pertl, who does a lot of work in the paint, and the Spurs have two good bigs with contrasting styles of play. Zach can, obviously, he can shoot a little bit better. Um, I mean, he's good around the rim. I mean, Yak is special, you know, uh, blocking shots and stuff like that. So, so like you said, they, they definitely two different, two different big men, but, I mean, I think they both are great for our team. Washington sits 11th in the Eastern Conference, one half game out of 10th. And just like the Spurs, the Wizards want to make a move to qualify for the playoffs. Now to help their chances tonight, the Wizards know they have to make it tough on Spurs all-star point guard, DeJounte Murray, who's playing the best basketball of his NBA career. I mean, DeJounte Murray, he's an all-star, you know, uh, and he's, he's playing like it, you know, uh, for us, you know, we're going to try to, do our best to contain that, you know, and try to uh, limit him to get into his spots and, and, and his shots. Um, you know, Spurs have been been hot. I mean, they've been rolling the last uh, few games. You know, a couple guys on their team is has been rolling. Um, so we're going to you know, just try to stop that, you know, and just you know see what we can do. Spurs and Wizards are underway in D.C. right now in the first quarter, and the Wizards lead 24 to 20. Greg will have highlights and post game on the night beat. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Next week, Marvin Leal and Sir McCormick will take part in the 2022 NFL Scouting Combine in Indianapolis. It's another chance for both of them to show NFL teams what they can do on the field. During our recent trip to Frisco to visit with them while training, we asked both of them what is an NFL team getting in them. Just somebody that's a good dude, you know, that's ready to work and just put his whole, you know, life and body on the line just to be successful. And, you know, if there needs to be a program change, I can help do that as well. And, if you know, if there needs to be a spot that needs to be, you know, used and put into, like, good hands, I'll do that as well. I'm just ready to work and just, just put my all into it. They get the, our five culture pillars of what's instilled into you know, me from college, you know, integrity, passion, mental, physical toughness, selfless, um, a perfect effort, all wadded up in one. That's the, t that's a, the package you're going to get from Sincere McCormick. You're going to give a loving, high-spirited, you know, character who cares about more than just himself. NFL scouting combine runs March the 1st through the 7th. Sincere and the running backs will work out on Friday the 4th. Leal and defensive lineman on Saturday, March 5th. Always great to see the local guys make good. It is. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. Our KSAT Q&A is up next. He is definitely one of the friends of the show, that is for sure. And he is a often guest here on KSAT Q&A. He is Trinity History Professor Kerry Lattimore. And we are always thrilled to have him. Kerry, thank you for joining us. It's Black History Month. And what I want to talk about is San Antonio's black community. Where is it today compared to where it was 50 years ago? Because the population really hasn't changed as far as numbers over that time. Right, and first, thank you, Steve and Myra, for bringing me back. I enjoy all the time being here. Um, I think San Antonio's African-American community right now is in a good place. Um, I think there's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot of younger people moving here. If we look at what's happened really since 2010 till now, um, there's just a really lot of enthusiasm, excitement, and energy um, that's really captiv you know, captivating the entire community. And so I think that 50 years ago, we were kind of living on one or two sides of the city. Now you can see the African-American presence throughout the entire city. And I would include also throughout Bear County as well. So it's an exciting time. And what do you attribute to that excitement, that energy? I mean, what has, what has prompted that to be the case now, you think? San Antonio is an exciting city. I mean, we've got a lot of things happening. Um, great newscasters, great news stations. <laughs> um, but also, you know, it's, it's, you know, compared with Houston and Dallas, it's still kind of like a small city, um, even though the numbers are big. But it's still kind of a city where people know each other. It's got kind of a Western flavor, I believe. Um, property, except for the last year or so, has been relatively reasonable. It's going up quite considerably lately. Um, you've got some educational institutions that are here. So all of the pieces that you need for an energetic city, um, for young people, for middle-aged people like myself, I think, and others, I think is here. 
Talk about San Antonio's history and when you think of people who have helped shape this community and helped shape kind of where we are today. What are, are there one or two names that, that stand out to you? There's so many names, but I'll give you a couple. You know, Myra Hemmings, um, a name that a lot of people haven't heard of, but this is a woman that helped form a black sorority, but also a woman that was engaged in the arts in San Antonio. And San Antonio has a large um, history of being involved in the arts, black San Antonio. And so she laid a groundwork. She was also part of um, black films being filmed in San Antonio. So an amazing woman who has national presence, but also a Claude Black too, um, who was a pastor at Mount Zion First Baptist Church, the church that I attend, but also a civil rights leader and, and, and innovator and someone that was very much ahead of his time. And as I move forward till today, you know, this is a place where it's given birth to Ivy Taylor and, and We've had, you know, black representatives of all political backgrounds from Will Hurd, um, Tommy Calvert, Rebecca Clay Flores, Fire Chief um, Hood, um, Assistant City Manager David McCary, I think, and um, Representative Barbara Hawkins. I mean, right now is an exciting time for black politics, exciting time for black business, um, an exciting time for black culture. Do you think that San Antonio is doing a better job or residents of San Antonio are doing a better job of also telling the stories of our black community and those important names you mentioned, Myra Hemmings, I'm, I'm going to remember her name. Um, in, in terms of knowing that history, are we all doing a better job of, of learning that? I think certainly over the last few years, a, a better job has been done. Um, and the words getting out, I mean, not just for black San Antonio, but the words getting out for San Antonio all over the place. I mean, people are moving to San Antonio and African-Americans are part of that migration here. Um, and so, you know, if you think about the cultural aspects of San Antonio, you know, we've got SACAM. Um, you've got, I, I remember I saw um, a clip that you did a couple of days ago about, what is it, the San Antonio Royal Steppers um, <laughs> organization that's working with bringing back the history of black cowboys in, in, in Texas and in San Antonio. We've got a black brewery here um, in San Antonio. I think the only black owned brewery in Texas. And so there's so many things that are happening in San Antonio. And I think the city's doing a great job or a better job. I, I think, you know, with artists, the city's working with local artists. The Poet Laureate is an African-American woman right now. Um, was it Caldrick Dow is working with the city to present more black art. And so I think the city's made a commitment or more, um, more intent on making a commitment. And I think that people within the city are also recognizing that the African-American contribution is important and we have something to offer to the entire city that makes the entire city better. It's not just African-American stuff for African-Americans. The stuff that African-Americans are doing is for everybody to engage and to enjoy and to be part of. Right. It's, it makes it makes for a better city. And I, I, right. I want you, you, you and I have visited. You're originally from Virginia. You moved here and, and you found some difficulties in kind of, you know, getting used to San Antonio, feeling like this was your home. Are we doing better and what needs to happen to keep this vibe as you said, going. I think for me, when I moved here, and that was many years ago in 2004, um, it was harder for people to kind of connect. And San Antonio is a city, um, how should I say this, that's, it's a good family city, um, and it's a great place to raise a family, but if you are um, single, it's, it might, especially back then, um, may have been a little more difficult, um, the connections that, level of communication probably was not as great then as it is now, I think, as it's moving. Um, and so I think the ways for a community to be built are stronger. I think about um, organizations within the city that build connections between young people, like the there's a MOAD center that's out there as kind of a workspace for young adults, to for young people to get together. And I think that there's many more places for younger people to get together. When I say younger people, I'm thinking younger professional people to get together, to hang out um, than there was when I moved here in 2004. And so I think that that's something that's really changed. What needs to continue to change is to see all this optimism and hopes um, continue. But I do hope that the property values kind of don't continue to go up too much. <laughs> yeah. Because that's going to 
curtail the number of people that are moving here from the kind of diverse backgrounds. And so I worry about that a little bit, but I think we're on the right track. And I think the word is getting out. And um, I'm not sure if we're a hidden secret anymore. I think we're out there. Secrets out. <laughs> so before we let you go here, every year at this time when we honor Black History Month and the stories of whether it's San Antonio's Black history or that of the Black history across the country are highlighted, is there a message that you hope people walk away with? I'd like people to walk away with hope and optimism. Um, sometimes when we talk about Black history, we talk about all of the difficult things and the things that black people have been through, and that's certainly part of the story. But I want people to focus on the successes and the hopes and the optimism and what black people have contributed through those obstacles. And so it's a way of looking at black history in an empowering way for all of us to take part of and to enjoy and to really see the contributions that African-Americans have made throughout the entirety of um, our existence here in America. It's been tremendous. We've done wonderful things. And so I hope that those things are, are part of that conversation and not just the horrific things, which are important to understand, but it's also important to recognize and to appreciate the tremendous things, the obstacles overcome, and the way Black people have built community and bridges across many different barriers and boundaries. Overcoming adversity. And maybe, Absolutely. you know, maybe we could work unshakable faith in there, too, which just <laughs> happens to be the title of Professor Carrie Lattimore's latest book, Unshakable Faith. You can get it at Amazon. I think they have it at Twig. It's all over town. So, Carrie Lattimore, always appreciate your time, buddy. My pleasure. I'll we'll take care. Yeah, you as well. We'll see you next time and we'll be right back. If you have a Honda CRV or a Honda Accord, listen up. There have been more than 270 complaints about brake issues with those vehicles. Now the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is investigating six of those complaints involve crashes and minor injuries. This is for CRVs from 2017 to 2019 and the 2018 to 2019 Accords. The concern has to do with the automatic emergency brakes. Reports are that the braking can happen unnecessarily without the driver touching the brake pedal. Not clear if this problem could affect other Honda models or years. Delta Airlines says its partnership with Russian airline Aeroflot is over, effective immediately. The airline made that decision after Russian President Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine, which is still happening. Through the agreement, Delta passengers could get tickets on Aeroflot flights from Moscow. And then Russian passengers could receive tickets for some Delta flights. Delta says that it does not operate any flights to Ukraine or to Russia. Live cam tonight as we take a look at 410 towards the airport. And, you know, things yeah. settling down. We're <laughs> stuck in a pattern yeah, for a yeah. while. Yeah, kind of settled here. Yeah. Adam. Yeah. You know, more of the same. Ho hum weather. That's the way I see it. Cloudy and cool. That's what the way it's going to be the rest of the night. Temperatures not falling off a whole lot. We're 39 right now. Northeasterly wind at 12 miles per hour and we'll just drop about five degrees through the night. So tomorrow morning we'll start the day just above freezing at 34, but slightly below freezing in the hill country. Combine that with a bit of dampness. We're going to talk more about the little bit of rain that we're expecting and when we'll finally clear out in just a bit. Coors Light blessing its fans with a beer to fight off the devil. Not kidding. The adult beverage brand shared on social media Wednesday that it is giving away free cans of its new Coors Almighty Light. The company says Coors Almighty is made with real blessed water to, quote, ward off demons and keep your soul safe, end quote. I have to think it's kind of tongue in cheek. Yes, yeah. their website claims the limited batch is blessed by an ordained minister. The new product is part of a team up with the Foo Fighters to promote the band's new horror movie, Studio 666. Yeah, and in that movie, Dave Grohl and other members of the Foo Fighters, you know, get possessed. Ah. So it's all kind of tongue in cheek. Got it. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Not but a I mean, I, gal. I mean, a lot of people may try Almighty Coors Light I mean, or Coors Almighty Light or <laughs> whatever it is. Adam Kasky, I'm guessing, will not be one. Yeah. I mean, Pretty so particular about your beers. No, I, I drink it all. Uh, I'll drink all of them, but I do. I am a home <laughs> brewer, so 
I get particular about the craft beers, but I, I don't know. I've heard some beer arguments. Yeah, I, th I think he's <laughs> a bit of a beer snob. No, no, not true. Not just, true. Just a little bit. Not true. Just not a bit. True. Oh. This See, much. Now I feel like I'm the one stirring the pot. <laughs> yeah, whoa. Yeah, you are. You feel like you are. You are <laughs> here. Yeah, you're stirring whoa. the uh, Modern hops. You used to be Switzerland right in the middle of well, us. You not know, anymore. Got to change things up sometimes. All right. Cold and damp tomorrow. Sunshine returns on Sunday, and that's when the temperatures start to rebound. All right. Let's take a look outside. We've got some light showers, a little sprinkle activity out there. Not a big deal. Just some dampness moving through DeWitt County, now generally east of Quero, heading into the Hall Hallettsville area, passing through Shiner, then Moulton. Uh, Gonzales, you haven't really been hit by too much of this. And in and around Seguin, a few little sprinkles. These are this is the kind of activity that you just notice on your windshield, and that's about it. Um, doesn't really add up to much, if anything. It's the nuisance moisture that we've been getting so much of lately. It's been coming in from Atascosa County, moving northward into the south side of San Antonio, and then a little bit elsewhere, even moving into the north side. Some of this sprinkle activity or very light rain, and then some drizzle to add to it overnight as well. I do think, in agreement with the future cast here, that those sprinkles and light showers will become more numerous overnight tonight. And first thing tomorrow morning, around and before sunrise, could actually lead to a few icy slick spots, uh, mainly just on elevated surfaces in the hill country. We're talking Kerrville to Blanco and especially northward. And mostly the street signs, the lamp posts, the backyard decks, that kind of thing. We don't anticipate many, if any, travel impacts in the hill country tomorrow morning. Around here, most of the rain is going to be along and east of I-35. That's where the bulk of the moisture is going to fall. The farther east you are of San Antonio, the higher your rainfall potential. Here's a look at some of that potential and you get closer to basically Lavaca County, DeWitt County, Gonzales, uh, Kennedy County, that's where in Carnes County, that's where we could have some higher accumulations on the order of maybe a quarter to a half an inch. OK, so that's the potential locally. I would say closer to a tenth of an inch of rainfall and then we turn off the chances until a slight chance comes back in in Wednesday of next week. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, back to sunshine, dry conditions by Wednesday. There's a slight chance, but I won't get your hopes up with that uh, slight chance next week. Temperatures, let's talk about them. Cool across the state or cold, I guess you could say. Widespread 30s out there right now. 35 Kerrville, 39 San Antonio, but we do get into the 40s south and west of town, at least for now. 41 Pleasanton and Uvalde tomorrow morning. Most of us in the mid 30s, but you get north of town. Canyon Lake 32, Kerrville, Rock Springs 31. Then by tomorrow afternoon, not a big temperature, swing. We only get up near 40 degrees along the Rio Grande in the mid 40s, but I do think parts of the hill country confined to the upper 30s. Even Timberwood Park 38, Bernie 37, Lake Hills 39 for a high temperature tomorrow. So another cold day, but it's also going to be damp with off and on light rain and sprinkles again around a tenth of an inch locally. Then Sunday, I think by about noon, we'll break out into sunshine. That'll boost our temperature back to 60 degrees and then early next week back up near 70, which is average for this time of year. <laughs> Heat wave, but average at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Heat wave compared wave. to today, that's for yeah. sure. In case you missed it, coming up next. To you. It is Friday, February 25th. And this time yesterday morning, a massive fire lit up the downtown sky as an abandoned building burned. It turns out that building was in the process of becoming a historical landmark. Flames destroyed all 17,000 square feet of that complex. According to the San Antonio Conservation Society, the building on Urban Loop was the first building built during the Wild West, and its history includes being a brothel back in 1883. It was the last remaining. Hey Jefferson, maybe 6,000 miles from Ukraine, but she feels the ripple effects at the gas pump. Oh, I got three for $10 and something. San Antonio gas prices are now averaging three fourteen a gallon, the priciest in seven years. Well, since yesterday, this one here went up 20 cents. Overnight. Overnight. It's crazy. What it is, is a global market, and with Russia, the second largest oil producer, it's been a busy month for human smuggling cases in Bear County. From a chase with a van of immigrants locked in the back, to a tractor trailer loaded with people on the far west side, to a bust at a property in southwest Bear County. An assistant special agent in charge at San Antonio's HSI office says we're in a post-holidays uptick. We have a lull in human smuggling uh, with people 
um, exiting the country, going home, and then uh, after the holidays are over, they're making their return back. President Biden making history Friday, fulfilling his campaign promise to nominate a black woman to the nation's highest court, a first in this country. I promised the process would be rigorous, that I would select a nominee worthy of Justice Breyer's legacy of excellence and decency. <laughs> Cloudy and damp tomorrow, off and on sprinkles, light showers tonight through tomorrow, and that's going to lead to maybe a tenth of an inch here and there locally, some slightly higher amounts east of town. But by Sunday, it's back to sunshine and 60 degrees. So indoor day tomorrow, outdoors by Sunday. I like that. One of each. Thanks for watching the News at 6. We'll see you back here on the Night Beat at 10.